Hello. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohan Badu, and uh, I work as a Fedora release engineer. And uh, obviously, that's the reason why I'm very much interested in Rawhide. <laughs> and <clears throat> uh, as a release engineer, I uh, have to ship a, a lot of uh, releases. And uh, one of them is Rawhide. And we ship it out every day, mostly. Uh, it's failing for the last two days, so. <laughs> um, how many of you know uh, Rawhide? And how many of you are using Rawhide as a daily? <laughs> wow, at least one. OK, I'm the other one in this, in this room, actually. <laughs> so um, I know the problems of Rawhide. So but let's get started. Uh, what is Rawhide? It's basically a current development version of Fedora. Um, everything you built, it just lands in Rawhide right away. Well, it takes about a day to get back in, to get into the repos. Uh, but there is no testing involved. You just build it, and it's there. <laughs> so that's why we fear about Rawhide. Untested, unstable, unreliable, all the other adjectives that goes with it. <laughs> And I guess a lot of you people know Ansible, right? How many of you know Ansible and use Ansible? Few people. So, and for the people who don't know Ansible, it's just an automation engine. So basically what it does is it can automate all of your uh, daily tasks and uh, so that it will be uh, taking out of a lot of burden off of your hands and it provides reliability and scalability. So the way that I solve this problem is basically using Ansible to automate my desktop environment. So how it all started is basically over here last year. I was giving a talk about Rawhide, and I was using Rawhide at the time, but not as a daily driver because of the obvious issues. And uh, then I decided I should automate my desktop environment. And uh, you know, whenever there is an issue, I can just rerun that Ansible playbook, and I have my desktop environment ready. But obviously, I want to be on the right head because it's the latest and greatest. And I can help with uh, Fedora QA with the bugs and reporting them and trying to fix those as well. So that's all it started. And all that I'm doing is basically using Ansible playbook to automate my configs and uh, uh, the, all the packages that I need and uh, other networking stuff and uh, file system related work. And I'll just run the playbook. If I cannot get back into Rawhide, I'll just install the Rawhide and uh, run the playbook and I will have everything ready, get going in like maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> um, I just created a demo, and uh, it's, not, uh, it's, not, it's not showing everything that I automated. It's just a few bits and pieces that I've taken. And uh, let's see how it goes. E well, on a VM. <laughs> and I installed the packages that I needed, because obviously network. So basically, it's getting my SSH keys and putting in the right di directories and uh, uh, on the uh, other power line configs that I use, Vim configs that I use, bash RC, everything. Uh, well, a bit of it right now what I'm running. Huh. So also cloning my Git repos for me. Yes, yes, I did. 
<laughs> no. Basically, what I did is, uh, right now I just unlocked it, but uh, what I did is uh, I uh, used Ansible uh, Vault to encrypt my uh, SSH keys. And, uh, and basically, I created this Ansible and put it in my uh, uh, GitHub private repository. Um, and it's done. So it should get a new session, and power line things are there. And it should have all the fed, OK, the packages that kind of maintain, and the other packages that I maintain in Pegor. I just picked only one or two. Um, this is it just, as I said, it's just a piece. and you can automate how much ever you want. And uh, you, you, I want people to be on Rawhide so that they can uh, use the uh, things that are coming into Fedora and uh, help us test them and uh, fix them. So this is one way that I solve this, but is this the best way? And OK, these are the things I've done in my play, uh, playbooks, like installing packages, configs, network stuff, firewall, git, and some services and file system stuff. But is this the best solution? And it's not. The best solution can be is getting rawhide builds so that we have tests running and uh, so that you won't break your rawhide all the time and uh, Rawhide compost test uh, getting uh, so that there will be uh, test running on the every compost that we push out. And if, uh, uh, if GreenWave says it is good, we sync it to the mirrors. And uh, there is also plan to add some CI testing on the uh, PRs in this gate whenever that happens. I mean, not all of them, all of them. <laughs> Um, and basically, the summary is I want all of you to use Rawhide. So to do that, automate your work environment setup and keep using Rawhide and let us know bugs, fixes, anything. And that's it. Any questions? Yes, yes. Uh, the first. I at some point write in a similar way to make sure that you have a place to set up multiple machines. The problem I ran into this with it was like it was much easier if I was to make a quick special or something like just do it on the machine and it never goes into the Ansible. How do you force yourself to make all the changes for Ansible? I didn't exactly get the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you force yourself to not do it directly on the file and instead change it in the Ansible playbook so that it's better? Oh, how do I? F OK. So the question is, let's say you want to change something in, uh, in one of the configs, and uh, how do I force myself to update the, uh, uh, my Ansible repo rather than just changing the file in my local system? Well, I will do it actually, when I change something in my local system, I'll just uh, put it on the uh, Git repo as well. Um, I, I, I'm forcing myself basically to do it. <laughs> That's interesting. I should try that. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, the solution was basically uh, use the symlinks so that you will always have the uh, content in the Git repo, and you are using the symlinks to the configs in your local system. 
and whenever you change uh, the symlink, obviously it will be getting affected in the Git repo, and you push it whenever you have time. And your question? Yeah. Yes, silver blue is good, and uh, I don't have uh, pr any problems with silver blue, but other, other than the uh, limitations, like not able to use slash opt and stuff. I use Chrome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yes, it is great, uh, but that's one of the u problems that I see with it. Uh, but that also does solve some of the issues that you face on a daily basis. Not, not yeah. The, <laughs> it is rawhide. Right. It's still going to break, but you can just roll back if needed. No, basically he can roll back to the previous one, right? Yeah, but this doesn't change anything if the server is Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that will solve all the problems. <laughs> Um, <laughs> any more questions? Probably not. And okay, try rawhide, please. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Please report bugs and try to help us make Fedora even better. Thank you.